Well, 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 um, you know, I always like to do this because there's so much going on. Um, I've had some conversations about non-Euro related subjects. Uh, for instance, uh, Lionel Messi missing a penalty in, you know, the uh, Copa America. Of course, it's not related to the Euros, but so everybody wants to draw it in, uh, you know. Okay, so gentlemen, good to see you, good to see you. Yeah, good to see you. It's good to, uh, it's good to be here. Yeah, but I determine what we're talking about yeah, here. Yeah, but we're talking about Euros. I determine what we're talking about here. <laughs> the name of the show, you Euro see, Today. Your best friend, Danny K, is very happy that I'm... <laughs> oh, you see, Nat is a very honest man. Because on Tuesday, we allowed Karim to bring us Copa America and World Cup stats <laughs> to make a point. Well, so if something again has happened in the Copa America, I think it's only fair for us to also mention... Yes, no, so when Karim comes, he will come up with... No, but Nat is a very honest man. <laughs> Once he has said that we will talk about it, I'm happy. Danny K could play a very good psychologist, you know. Uh, maybe he should try a role of, you know, guidance and counseling coordinator for any university. He'll do very well in there. <laughs> Trying to win me over. Okay, well, it's granted. Later on, we're going to talk about that penalty miss because whether or not uh, we like it, it has a correlation with what happens generally in the global trends of football. But once again, you're all welcome. Remember, later today, we're giving something away. Very, very nice from NASCO as usual. And so you'd have to be extra, extra attentive. Later on, we'll just uh, activate the phone lines and put the number on, as well as the big question, so you can answer and uh, win that very big prize from one of our sponsors, NASCO. Let's now get down to the business, shall we? Gentlemen, it's been uh, relatively a very, very interesting set of games that we've seen in this... Uh, you know, in this phase. Now, we're zooming in on who makes it and who gets those tickets for uh, the last four of this competition. Um, on the whole, I mean, we all saw what happened in Hungary about, uh, you know, four years ago. Yeah. And we were the, you know, the main broadcast partner here. There were some very exciting games. Italy, unfortunately, didn't bring their A game. And now we have a new set of teams which are giving us an indication of the new set of global beaters that we should expect in the next maybe three to four years? Yeah. Um, look, there's, there's so much quality in, in, in football as it stands these days. In fact, and it cuts across, it's not just in Europe. Um, you can pick out almost every team at any major competition and find a household name in there. So you talk about uh, Carvescalia, who plays for Georgia. Um, gone are the days. In fact, in the past, you would not see something like this where you could just randomly pick it a team that is not traditionally known for stars. You look at Poland, even Poland had a, a golden generation at a point, Lewandowski is still playing for them. Every single team, or almost every single team across sport, and it even happened in the AFCON where a team like Equatorial Guinea had somebody like Nsue, somebody we've watched in the Premier League all these years. So football is, 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 is growing. It's an indication of the growth of the sport and how far reaching it is getting, how well people are, 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 are are doing the sport, or how well they are running the sport, making sure that they uh, can churn out their own superstars, and it's translating in, in national team football. So at the end of the day, the name on the paper in terms of the, the, the name of the team may not sound scary, but the content of that team is scary, and, and that's where we are reaching. So for me, whoever has reached the quarterfinal, whoever has reached the semifinal, deserves to be there. However they got there, they deserve to be there, because now, you have to work to beat any team. We saw England struggle against Slovakia. We saw uh, Portugal struggle against Slovenia. These teams are not small anymore. You look at the uh, Slovenian team and they have Sesco, a striker that almost every big team in Europe is, is chasing. It just shows you that teams are slowly building themselves. They are slowly stacking in terms of quality. And don't look at names anymore because um, players are sp quality is spread around and you never know who uh, might, might hunt you down. I agree with him and uh, I believe now, the only challenge is the mental aspect of things because on paper, like Daniel said, almost all the teams, they've got some big names there, players that are, are recognized in Europe. We talk about Oblak, yeah. Tesco, so many of the players who apply their trade in Europe and are well recognized as far as European competitions are concerned. But now, the only way they have to go is to develop themselves mentally. Once you meet a team who are probably uh, dominant in the competition, who are regarded as powerhouses in European football, what the lesser known teams must do is that they have to be mentally ready and believe that they can also beat those teams because their performance have been very good against the bigger teams. We've seen England struggle. I think in all the last 16 games, 
there's been some sort of struggle. Oh, none of the games were plain sailing. Even the Holland game or the Netherlands, who defeated Romania by three goals to nil. But when you watch the game, Romania were not bad. They also displayed some sort of quality. But I think the moment, what they have to do at the moment is to believe that they can edge past these big teams. The big teams just feel like they have to win. They are supposed to win. And that, I think, marginally gets them over the line. But if the lesser teams can have that mentality, they'll give the big guns a run for their money. Well, um, talk about lesser known teams or smaller teams. It's all over on that end because now uh, there are some big teams, especially the game we want to focus on. So um, there's a scenario here. Uh, it's Germany versus Spain. Before we get down to the conversations, let's just quickly take a look once again at the big highlights and how uh, these big guns managed to make it to this particular stage. So now we can start looking at the facts. That well, uh, the German team that we saw slightly slump at a certain point after winning the 2014 World Cup seemed to be on the rise one more time. And it's because of the fusion of new talents and uh, a new direction technically. So there we go. Germany versus Spain. This sure is one fixture that would have been very, very attractive for a final game. Yes, and the uh, Clash of the Titans is quite interesting when you look at the performance of these two teams uh, in the previous major tournament in the 2022 World Cup in Qatar. Both didn't really play well. They were not up to the mark. And two years on, they are arguably, the, not even arguably, undisputable, the two best uh, teams in this competition. They play similarly high pressing. They want to have the ball possession. They've got a blend of uh, supremely talented youngsters and veterans as well. And they score so many goals. Germany, they've scored more. Spain, they are the top two teams with the highest goals in the competition. So it's, it's a game that uh, we will all love to watch. Uh, it will bring so many excitement. We expect some uh, attacking football. But I think the key thing in this afternoon's game would be the team with uh, the defensive solidity. Because I feel the two teams can score more. They, they play high up the pitch. They take high risk and they probably get high reward. That is why they score more goals. And so you look at a team with a defensive solidity. If Spain go into that game with a bit uh, of caution, so sort of solidity at the back, that tactics will obviously take something out of their game. But I, I feel it's Germany who are having that a bit. I think they are quite uh, defensively okay than Spain. Spain might have considered just a goal, but you look at the opponent they faced, there, there, there are some sort of question marks about their performance. They met Georgia, they met uh, Croatia, Italy. These teams are objectively, they are struggling teams. Unlike Germany, they met Hungary. Hungary, they were the dark horses of many people heading to this tournament. Switzerland, they are a very, very good side. That is why they are in the quarterfinals of the competition. So Germany have faced some really good sides and they've been able to contain them. Unlike Spain, who have faced a lesser known teams, though they were able to brush these teams aside. So I feel it's going to be engaging. We should expect uh, uh, enterprising football. But then you, see, you look at Germany and you feel they will head into this game with some sort of uh, defensive uh, pragmatism. And I think that will probably work against this Spanish team. Uh, Daniel, when two teams known for their relative high press come together or clash, at a stage like this, what kind of first half would you expect? Um, the first thing you need to consider is the two managers. They are not managers who necessarily like to compromise on their, on their philosophies. So they will both want to impose their style on the game. And that's what makes me happy as a neutral, because then we are, we are sure to have a very electrifying clash. Um, the sort of first half we'll have will be a very chaotic one. Uh, because both teams are very comfortable in possession. At the same time, both teams also press really well. So it is either we are going to see a complete masterclass that we've probably never seen before from one of the midfields, either Rodri or, or, or Fabian Ruiz or whoever partners Cruz on the day, who I think should be Emre Chan and not Andrich because of their opposition. But um, I think we'll have a very interesting first half uh, full of chances because these are two teams. There will be spaces, that's what we know. There will be spaces for both teams to exploit. And 
Um, when you when there are two attacking teams that are playing, once they see the spaces, they want to go for it. So for me, I'm expecting a very exciting game, full of chances. Um, the funny thing is that it could easily be one of those games that will be very high scoring or one of those very interesting low scoring games because there will be a lot of missed chances. There's Morata and there's Havertz at, the, at both ends. They are not your most prolific strikers. So then again, you could, you could have uh, some problems in finishing. But look, this is, for me, this is the, the game of the round in terms of uh, what neutral should be looking forward to. And as a neutral as well, who has the biggest composure based on the run so far from, from your observation. Who has the biggest composure? And I'm asking this obviously because there's a very high potential that this game could travel beyond 90 minutes. Yeah, high potential, and you're right. But who has the most... I think the Spaniards will be a bit more composed. I think the pressure... The Germans before, if you read the portals, they were not too expectant of this team before the start of the competition. But the end of the group stages changed their minds. The kind of performance that they put forward um, the German public has started believing that they could go all the way. And this is probably the toughest fixture that they, they, will, or they have faced or they are yet to face in the competition. So they would expect an, an increased level of performance. And that obviously will put a certain level of pressure on the players. When you look at some of the players in there, like most of the, the guys in there, they are rather young. You look at the Musialas, the Vates, the Havets. These guys have not, they have not carried teams. They've not had that responsibility of, of, of shouldering the pressure uh, throughout their careers. Yes, they've been part of teams, but they have not necessarily been uh, the ones to look at in, in those pressure, uh, pressure situations. So I think this will be sort of new to them. Uh, Spain themselves, once they are playing against the hosts, um, not too many people expected much from them because of the, 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 the age of this uh, Spanish team, quite pretty young. So it was like, just go out, express yourselves. Yeah, if you win, it's nice. If you lose, we are basically working for the future. So there's nothing really wrong with it. So I think Spain will be a bit calmer in this situation. But um, the two guys on, 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 on the screen, I think they will decide the game. I think there's a direct battle between Rodri and, and uh, Cruz. Because for me, whoever is able to control the midfield will win the game. It's, it's as simple as that. Because this, and we know how both teams play. In order for the ball to get into the final third for the uh, uh, Nico Williamses and the Laminia Mouse or the Musialas and whoever to effect damage, it needs to pass through the midfield. It needs to, uh, the midfield needs to be under control for them to get those opportunities. So whoever wins that battle uh, between Cruz and Rodri, I think that is, that is where the game will be won. Okay. Uh, the midfield will be crucial. Um, any other element that you suspect could come to play here? Um, as, as we look at who could possibly come out of this very tough tie. Yes, uh, I, Daniel touched on the midfield. I want to briefly look at the, the, the attacking prowess of, of the two teams. Spain have created many chances. Germany have also created many chances. They've had many attempts. Uh, they are the two teams with the most goals in the competition. Mm -hmm. But that statistics, watching the games, Havertz... He has missed many, many very good opportunities. And when you look at Spain as well, even in their last game, they had many opportunities and they missed those opportunities as well, despite the 4-1 triumph. Look, Nat, the two teams, they must be clinical this afternoon. I am not too confident in uh, Kai Havertz. I feel he's not, like Danny said, he's not the most prolific of scorers. And, and so you can probably depend on Nicolas Fulgrog, who would emerge from the bench and probably do something. Now, you look at Spain, they are having almost, every player can score from almost everywhere. If Nico doesn't score, um, uh, Morata does. If Morata doesn't, Fabian Ruiz would score. If he doesn't, Rodri is there. So for Spain, the goal scorers are scattered across. But you look at Germany, it's either they are reliant on Musiala, who has scored three goals so far. So you take up Musiala, and who else? Emery Chan has scored just one, maybe Fulgrog. He doesn't even start games. He emerges from the bench. So on that score, you can clearly see that if should, should Spain score, it will be very, very difficult for Germany to come back. OK, you agree? <sighs> not necessarily. It, it might be difficult for them to come back because they will not score, not because they will not create chances. Yeah, the chances that's, they would create. I'm, I'm referring to. Uh, how efficient they can be with those yeah. chances. Yeah.
All right, uh, efficiency-wise, let's see how things go. But remember, later during the show, we will activate the phone line so that uh, you can join us with your thoughts, especially on which answer will be correct. Remember, once the first caller gets the answer correct, they get to win the prize from NASCO. Uh, thank you so much, uh, as always, say to our friends at NASCO for making that segment possible. So we'll be getting into the other game very shortly. But um, away from everybody else, I mean, the traditional names... Is there any other player that you believe can probably come on as an impact sub or, you know, come do something different? It happens sometimes in these, on these big stages, especially because of the hunger that some of the players have uh, in wanting to be on, on the stage where the jersey and play actual games and not sit on the bench. Yeah, one name that springs to mind obviously would be Nicolas Fogrug uh, of, of, of Germany. He hasn't started a game in, in, in the Euro so far, yes, he scored two goals, I think, and, and that is very, very impressive. Uh, we're talking about how Kai Havertz has been firing blanks and people are even calling for a full group to start. But then he could be a, a very good player who em emerges from the bench and then change games. But for Spain, they have so many players who can just come in and then make a difference. And that is why I feel they slightly have the edge over Germany because even in the game against, uh, in their last game against Albania, where they changed almost, they changed 10 players, started 10 players from the bench, and they impressed. They, they scored a goal. You look at their performance against Georgia. Players emerged from the bench, and then they made impact. Dani Olmo, and uh, they've got Ferran Torres, who are all scorers, who have all scored in the competition. And so I think these players can make a difference in the game this afternoon. Well... We're looking forward to who will make the difference, but at the end of the day, it's who scores, whether it's through the penalty shootout or regular play time, to see who goes to the next stage of the competitions. This is uh, Euros Today, right here on Joy Prime. My name is Nathaniel Atto. Here with me in the studio are uh, uh, Daniel Kranting and uh, Mubarak. Now, you, you can... <laughs> We've spoken about this game, but we haven't mentioned any of the goalkeepers. It clearly tells you that the two teams don't really care about defending and to attack. Nobody has mentioned Noya. Nobody has also mentioned the goalkeeper of Spain. How's he called? Oh, nice oh, nice one. So clearly, not unlike maybe Portugal, you can talk about maybe the old Costa, his uh, Costa, his heroics, or maybe England, Pickford, or a couple of. And then again, these two teams have hardly faced chances. Yeah. So well, so let's see what happens tonight. Well, uh, how does uh, anyone break the jinx? That's the very big question we're trying to answer here in the studio. So you stay with us. Uh, a round of commercials, and after that, we come back with analysis from Karim. And we uh, start projecting into the next game. Who wins that one? Would it be uh, the legend, Cristiano Ronaldo, or his protege, the man, Kylian Mbappe? Stay. Well, Euros Today on Joy Prime and on 281 on DSTV is proudly sponsored by Heritage Christian College, educating passionate entrepreneurial leaders. Also, NASCO, NASCO Bring Home Happiness. Later on, NASCO will help us give out a prize to you who answer correctly. Well, it's time to bring Karim on, and um, it's time to redeem my pledge or my promise to zoom in on the conversations on, uh, you know, the Copa America. How are you doing, man? Good to see you. He almost rejected my handshake. Yeah. That's, <laughs> a very, that's a very diplomatic handshake. Yeah. All of them are fake. I see. <laughs> see. The Ameri uh, British singer, Scarlett G, mm -hmm. he says that distractions can come into your life dressed as love and attention. Mm. That is what he said. I see. <laughs> <laughs> Yesterday, he shaked my hand the same way, yeah. but the kind of heckling he, he gave to me <laughs> was next level. Today, yes. let's see what happens. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, um, I mean, we, we spoke it, about the Copa America example, and it's important that, you know, because, look, whether we like it or not, these tournaments are happening at the same time. Yes. And some of the key examples from each, either one helps us with the analysis. So, uh, the World Cup winning goalkeeper from Argentina pulled off that one. A very uh, good set of saves. But this one hit the bar, and it reminded me of, uh, you know, uh, Roberto Baggio. Oh, okay. Roberto Baggio hitting the bar. The name you are mentioning, be careful. Yeah, yeah. Where were you in 1994? I don't know. What about you? I was there. I was there. Wait. I was watching the game. You were there in the US in 1994 when Ghana. Roberto Baggio struck the bar? Oh, I watched the game. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
I want to start off from Twitter, what some people call X now. I want to read a tweet. Mm. Mother Universe literally lifted the same situation Ronaldo experienced and gave to Messi. And we are seeing two completely different reactions. We respect Messi's greatness and admit there are times his teammates must chip in. But Ronaldo is a liability. <laughs> Hypocrisy exposed again. Okay. I won't say anything. That is all. This is from X. Yes. You okay. can go and search Who and wrote see. that? That's such an intelligent tweet. <laughs> this is the most accurate I don't tweet. want to mention the one who wrote it, but if you are demanding, the one who wrote it is sitting here. <laughs> the first when you come inside the room. <laughs> I don't know his name. <laughs> 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 we, we just need to put the two of you in a, in a sports car, you know. One of you should drive and drive away so you solve your problems. So, right. yesterday I said I was coming to finish something. Yes. And I said I didn't want to be poor. Lie. I will never be poor. I will finish it today. Whatever happens, I will finish it. You will finish it. So, the free kick starts. I'm still on it. Mm. At major tournaments, World Cup and Euros, Ronaldo to, uh, took 60 free kicks. Ben, I displayed a graphic. Ben, I displayed a graphic. <laughs> Ronaldo took 60 free kicks and scored only one. I've spoken at length about that. And I asked the question yesterday, let's move it to the next one, where those free kicks are ending up. And I was saying that if Ronaldo is taking a free kick, there is 33% chance that it could go out it will, it will not be on target. Most likely, some of them will be end up as true ins. 33 percent chance. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that ah, that Ronaldo one. chance will not a free kick from Ronaldo will not be on target. There is 1.7 percent chance that it will end up as a goal, and just above 20 percent chance that it will be on target. That is a fact. But well, what could be accounting for all of this? Is it just you know? The relative mm. experience in the game, he's seen so many of these and there's so, no bite then let getting me just, out of his system. Let me conclude on the whole free kick thing and let's talk about it. The thing is, Ronaldo, when he started off, was part of the elite free kick takers. Mm. But succumbent is a research they have done between 2014-15 season and the 2021-2022 season. Ronaldo's free kick conversion rate have dropped out of the 10% uh, percentage. So it means that, and the same research established that elite 150 players they've studied among the top five leagues in Europe, they have an average scoring percentage from free kicks of 10%. And since the 2014-15 uh, season, Ronaldo to 2021-23, Ronaldo's percentage has dropped out of that 10%. It means that Maybe his strategy has been found out. That is why he's not getting those goals from the free kicks. But this is important. On average, the XG expected goal from a free kick is 0.06. Uh, .06. It means that there's, when a player is taking a free kick, there's 6% chance that it will end up as a goal. So if you are talking about it in numbers, it means if a player is taking a free kick, out of 17, there's the likelihood that one will end up as a goal. Mm. But in the same research Sokament <coughs> did from the top five leagues, there are some players they've established that the average ones score 12.9%. 12, uh, 12 Messi being among them, but in that same time, that 2020, I just established that Ronaldo was not among the players that are averaging over 10% chance of converting a free kick. Also, in that same 150 players, Sokament stated, it means if it, there's uh, of all 90 minutes playing, they've established that 0.2 percent, uh, 0.27 um, ex, uh, free kicks taken per 90 minutes. So it means that from those 90 minutes, if the average player is taking, it means that one in 27 free kicks are likely to end up in a goal. So it means that when we are looking at it, maybe it's just, it's not a Ronaldo problem. It's a general thing. 
So Daniel Crantin's worry, I don't know since yesterday, has not has no basis. So he didn't need to worry. There was a conclusion I was arriving at. Let's go on. There's a big game, uh, big game coming up. Today. No, but the point is, what I said yesterday is what you've also said. So why is that so when I said it, you were complaining? I was not complaining. I just told you to relax and let me finish. That was what you I know, was telling you. These two yesterday. also seem to be in the same weight class. Maybe we should put them <laughs> in the Buko Marina as well for... No, but now it's also very important for the viewers. Eh? Mm. Karim has looked... I heard a question about whether he scored in the Copa America or not. No, zero goals. Okay. But relax, why are you saying it with such verve? So, <laughs> I, I just said that li uh, some distractions can come into your life as a show of affection and love. And I is one of those people. <laughs> why are you disrupting my team with video? Have I ever brought a video here? Why? <laughs> ben, are you are an enemy. This guy is a safe <laughs> Let's review the uh, France versus Portugal game. Very well. France and Portugal will be meeting for the fifth time at the Euros. In those five times, the last two, Portugal have not lost in them. In the 2016 final, in extra time, they won 1-0. And in the 2020, uh, 2020 Euros, 2-2. Two, two. Two, two. Ronaldo scored two penalties, then Benzema also scored twice, one of them being a penalty. But in those five meetings, any time France win the game, it means that they are ending up as champions. That is, I think in 1984, they won 3-2 in the semi-final and won the trophy. Then, I think in 2000 or so as well, they won, uh, they won and also won the final. But if you are looking at it, it means that Portugal will also be fancying their chances if they beat France. They will be, that will be a big statement win. We know that France are not creating a lot in front of goal, but they are very compact at the back. But if Portugal finds a way to get past them, this they will also be seeing it, their path clear to the title. Mm. Wow, interesting stuff there. So um, there these it is. are the opta predictions. Mm. Mm. They see France as slightly favourites ahead of Portugal, and that is understandable looking <coughs> at the kind of team mm. France have. All right, guys. Um, Karim, thank you so much. Let's see how things go uh, for this particular game. <laughs> <laughs> and watch out for that exhibition bout between the two, um, you know, strawweight competition. <laughs> All right, guys, guys. Um, but why would you do that? <laughs> strawweight competition. <laughs> guys, this, this is the moment. Um, you, you go back to the Wimbledon situations or the Grand Slam situations in various tournaments and you see how sometimes um, some players who look up to others like legends come up against these legends and have yeah. to play against them and beat them. And there's a high possibility that that could happen in this game. Yeah, it's happening. Kylian Mbappe going up against his idol, yeah. Cristiano. Mbappe says it's an honor to face Ronaldo. <laughs> Um, Ronaldo confirmed that this will be his last Euro, so this is probably the last time that Mbappe will have the opportunity of facing him in a competitive game. It's happened at the last Euros, but obviously in the last Euros, Mbappe wasn't the main man, he wasn't the star of the team. This is the first time they will be going at each other with both of them captaining and carrying their teams as, as, as the star men. So, um, and you can understand why it means this much to Mbappe. Um, he is the one on top as a stands in, in, in world football. Um, he's, we all know that his idol is Cristiano Ronaldo, but the interesting thing is that after all that has happened this week, Ronaldo has a point to prove. Um, he shouldn't have a point to prove, but he has a point to prove because he's Ronaldo. And um, you, you, you expect that in as much as yes, it's sort of like the handing over, or yeah, the turning of, of uh, is it, yeah, handing over the guard. Um, Ronaldo will still want to... to to prove that he is still number one. That is what he does always. That's what keeps him going. But look, I don't think that the, the stats are lying. I don't think the, the graphic is lying in terms of the uh, prediction. I thought France would even be close to 40, 45% um, in terms of their uh, being favorites to win this game. I think their defense is, is so solid. And the fact that Portugal have created, but are yet, yet are finding it difficult to score. I think coupled with that, France for me are, are I would say they are favorites. They are, they are not overwhelming favorites, but obviously for me they are, they are favorites in this game. Unless, unless some Ronaldo magic happens. Unless some Ronaldo magic happens, I think. But um, why are you focusing on just Ronaldo? He hasn't scored, so why don't you mention other scorers as well? 
Maybe Bernardo still best magic. Yeah, but Portugal haven't scored in the last two games. Okay. Yeah, France are creating opportunities, and even if it's own goals, they are scoring goals. Okay. And that is that is the point. Bernardo Silva is not your. No, but he has scored. Your... Bernardo Silva has scored. Bruno has scored. Yeah, Bruno has mentioned scored. their names. Yeah. What, what I'm you saying, focusing on just Ronaldo. What I'm saying is that the Portuguese team hasn't scored okay. in the past two games, okay. which is fact. If Ronaldo didn't score in two games, it is a crime. So if the entire Portuguese team is not scoring, I think it's also fine for me to say the team is not scoring. Or because you said it last time that Ronaldo hasn't scored in two games means a crime. So if, <laughs> if the Portuguese team has also not scored in two games, I think it's only right for me to also point at, uh, point that out. Uh, France, yes, they are struggling going forward in terms of not scoring themselves, but they are forcing the opposition to score, and which shows you how good they are. Uh, their offense is. It's just, it's just not coming together. Again, this could be the game that could come together for both teams. But I don't think this would be as interesting as the, the Spain and, and Germany game. I think these are no. two very pragmatic teams. <laughs> There's another game. element of games uh, like these <coughs> that we always have to also focus on. The element of star power and how sometimes the uh, respective defense setups end up facing or end up focusing too much on either star player, and that exposes them sometimes. Yeah, not uh, sometimes it, it, it does happen, but um, it doesn't take an elephant to triumph in battle. I mean, Ronaldo is clear that he's not himself in this tournament. Proper Ronaldo will not play four games and not score a goal. Uh, Kylian Mbappe hasn't also scored yet. Uh, has he? Oh, he scored a penalty. Yes. Yeah, so and obviously. He, that's far from his best. We know what the two players are capable of. But this is a match that I think uh, it will be played beyond the top players on, on, on the pitch because uh, the two sides have got big players. I mean, uh, Ronaldo is obviously bigger than any other player in France and, of course, in Portugal. But this is a game that is very big because uh, of the star players in it, Griezmann and co, Bruno, Bernardo Silva, Dembele. These players are established players in Europe. And so I think the players in there are quite familiar with playing against this uh, top players, top opponents. And so I don't think that will affect the game match. Uh, I feel what would affect the game match would be um, what the two coaches will do uh, on the bench or on the touchline. Uh, I'm not so confident in Roberto Martinez and especially in this Port Port Portugal team. Um, that is my opinion. And you look at France, France are obviously not at their very best. But you look at their, their performance against Belgium. Though Belgium didn't really play well, France can create chances. Okay, they've created chances. And it's just the killer instinct that they are lacking. But you look at Portugal, the chances necessarily, especially clear-cut chances, they don't really come. And I think that is very problematic. From that, or looking at the game from that sense, I feel France slightly, slightly, they have the edge over Portugal. Well, the young shall grow, and also they say surprises do happen. Which one will be the surprise? Obviously, uh, France having an edge in terms of all the, you know, the uh, research that has been <coughs> done and the projections could just go the other way. Well, um, let's ask you the question now. Remember, uh, the number we placed at the bottom of the screen so you can call and, um, you know, and answer. Once you answer us correctly, the prize will be yours, and we're giving away a box iron from NASCO. Now, which player won the Golden Boot Award in the 2012 edition of the Euros? Which player won the Golden Boot Award in the 2012 edition of the Euros? So, you call. Uh, the number is there on your screen. Just call and um, tell me who the Golden Boot winner from 2012 is, and that <coughs> prize will surely be yours. Now, so don't tell me I'm not eligible. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys, let's, let's now uh, look at the scoring situations and the probable goal situations as well. I mean, the possibility of going to penalty. If, if this goes to penalties, it will be very interesting, wouldn't it? Yeah, it will. Um, and it can. Yeah, it can. That's what I say. It's not... We then we'll draw the goal less and we'll go to penalties. It's very typical of two teams. But if it goes to penalties, I... I... <laughs> You really don't know where it's going because Mike Mania is a super goalkeeper when it comes to penalties. So is uh, Diego Costa, who I showed in the last round. Um, Mbappe, last time his French team went to penalties in the Euros, he was the guilty party. He missed against Switzerland. So you really can't tell. But then again, um, I think this is a game where we'll see the big boys show their, 
they are metal. I think if France is going to score, it will be Mbappe. If Portugal is going to score, it will be Ronaldo. <laughs> because you like the two players. No, that's just how I see it. This is, this is where... One hasn't no, scored, consistently, one a penalty. The fact of the matter is that consistently these guys have shown... We are talking about trends. But they have these guys this have tournament. Shown. No, it's not about this tournament. It's about the, at the highest level. These guys have shown that when they're going get stuff, they are usually the guys who run... Who, who rise up. You don't pick somebody who has done it once against somebody who has done it a hundred times. I don't think that is smart. Mm. <laughs> mm, mm. What do you think? Well, I, I, I agree, I agree. And okay, just before, just before you go on with that point, uh, we have a caller on the line. Hello, good afternoon. Yeah, good afternoon. Okay. Um, thank you so, so much for joining us here on the show. Um, I'd like you to, first of all, um, tell me your name and repeat the question I asked so that I'll know you're very uh, clear on it. Yes, yeah, my name is Alfred. And the question is, which player won the 2012 Golden Boot at the Euros? Okay. Let me just whisper quickly. Um, give me a second. Let me just whisper something to uh, him. <laughs> 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 all right, all right, all right, all right. All right, guys, let's <clears throat> now get the answer. Uh, what's the answer? Tell me. It's Fernando Torres. Fernando Torres is very, very correct. Uh, that was the first attempt, and that kills it for all of us. Congratulations to you. Hold on and speak to uh, my <clears throat> producer, and um, we're going to present your prize to you very shortly. Congratulations once again. Ah. Yeah, first attempt, and it was done. Unfortunately, you know... Maybe if he didn't answer, it would have given you a dispensation. <laughs> no, I was waiting, I was waiting. <laughs> Fernando Torres had a very interesting run at Chelsea. You know, uh, the 60 million that was used to purchase him uh, became of use only when he scored that goal against Barcelona, Barcelona. to get to the final of the... Even the 2012, he was a peripheral figure. Came off the bench. Yeah, yeah, then... yeah. Just tormenting Manchester United defence. Yeah, That's yeah. just very, what very... I don't like about him. <laughs> <laughs> As a United fan, him playing for Liverpool. Obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure Fernando Torres has his prayers up. Okay, so um, you were giving me your, your final thoughts on that. Yeah, you know, no, I believe this game wouldn't be entertaining. I feel France, <clears throat> what you can't really take away from France is that they would be pragmatic. That is just the way Didier Deschamps sets up his team. Portugal might come out trying to prove a point, especially after playing uh, penalties in their last encounter. But I just hope that doesn't play into the hands of France because they've got quick wingers. They, they, they've shown that they can create chances. And once they do, I don't really trust the defensive back line of, of uh, Portugal as well. So should that happen, France, like I said, France, they, they, are, they have the slight edge to win this game. Okay. All righty. Um, let's I'm start on for... England. <laughs> I wish them all. It's again. coming home. <laughs> <laughs> England, they England are undefeated been... in 13 matches against Switzerland. Mm. Yes, mm. so let's see what happens tomorrow. I'm, I'm not going to predict, but. Why? What do you want me to predict? No, you said 13 matches. Really? Yeah, I'm just setting the record straight. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. they could make it a 14. Yeah, they could make it a Simple as that. Yeah. Yeah. Who would you prefer remains, Switzerland or England? Prefer you take Switzerland. Of course. No one. It's not I just for your want preference. preference. No. no, I want my players to come and rest. You want your players to come and rest? <laughs> yeah. Okay, okay. All right, cool. All right, so um, he has a red phone, uh, the red cross or the white cross, which of them? We'll get to see about that. But guys, thank you so much. Uh, thank you very much. Um, thank you. Uh, thanks to Karim as well. Thanks to the whole production team. We'll be back on Monday. Uh, there'll be a lot to talk about, obviously. But you can catch us on radio uh, in, within the next hour as we bring you um, the review show as we look forward to the weekend. The show will be... There's live commentary tomorrow as well. But you stay well. We'll be back tomorrow with another show. My name is Nathaniel Atom, and I have love for sport.